Hello, 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 beautiful, beautiful listeners. Oh, I'm on video too this time. We're going to do video with the show too. Oh, I always like to close my eyes and drop in as we start. So my beautiful listeners, welcome back to the Powerful Inc. Startup Stories podcast. Uh, this is not season one or season two. It is just a continuation. You may have heard me speak of seasons, um, but then I recently changed my mind and I'm throwing it out all the window throwing it out the window uh, because I get to make the rules and I get to decide. And that's what I decided would just be easier than like managing seasons. Um, And if you're like me, which you might be, if you've been hanging out with me for a while, I just wanted to clarify because I, uh, I like to have all the information and understand why somebody said they were doing it one way and then changed it in their business. So there you go. That's what's happening behind the curtain. So welcome back to the show. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Risa Hasbrook, who is down in the U.S. and has a coaching business called Risa4Coaching.com. Go and check her out. Uh, It's the number four in between, R-I-S-A, number four, coaching.com. And Risa is about three years in to her online coaching business, but describes herself as having been a serial entrepreneur. So she's going to tell us what that means to her, because I always love identifying like the difference between maybe somebody who comes from more of an employee background and is now shifted into the entrepreneur or someone who's always felt like an entrepreneur. Oh, pardon me. It didn't meet in time. Okay, you know it's rough and uh, raw up down here, so bear with me as I recover from a camping trip. And without further ado, let's just bring Risa in, otherwise I'm going to be chatting all morning and nobody wants to just hear me. So Risa is um, got so much like joyous energy in her online personality. Her posts are funny and engaging and have so much value, like even in just reading them, getting to know her before the show here, um, I was picking up on her energy and her, she is tapped in, dropped in, knows what she stands for, knows what her messaging is, um, and is really empowered in coaching others to release themselves in the same way. So welcome to the show, Risa. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Great. So tell us a little bit about um, say the last five years, if you will. So I'm very interested in like the initial stages of launching this business, but also knowing what other business ventures you may have um, explored or or developed prior. Okay, may I go like a, three years earlier? So that just okay. makes sense. That's- you pick your own timeline for sure. <laughs> about the time when we as a family immigrated to the U.S. At that point, I was a homeschooling mom. Okay, so I had no experience in corporate, but I was mm-hmm. always, I was always, even though I stayed at home and I homeschooled them, I was always a writer. I always wrote books, okay. and articles yeah. and things like that, just okay. to keep a little bit of sanity. Otherwise, yeah. I'm crazy. Okay. And then we came to the U.S. with two teenagers. And because of the exchange rate between the two countries, South Africa and America, it's like, I realized we will not be able to retire here. We can't afford that because of, you know, it's like the money is not worth much in over here. And then I realized my kids are probably going to settle in America, build a life here. Mm -hmm. I could see myself going back to Africa 10,000 miles away. Mm -hmm. That's all my husband and I have to contribute to our pension funds. I'm going to start an online business. And I think like many of your listeners, what they would do, you start with what you know. So I was a homeschooler. So I started a language course for homeschoolers in South Africa because I had a network there. And, you know, a little bit of know-how, I understand, you know, how to do language. And I had this idea. But soon I was working hours and hours and making so little money, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is which is the typical thing, right? Yep. You have this idea. And because I, I had I had no idea what I was doing. You know, I had mm-hmm. so much to learn. It was an online course that I, I yeah, hosted on Teachable. Okay. So I had to figure that out. Yeah. That's just one part of it. You know, it's yeah. like, how do you write a course? And I was, I think it was good, good advice that I got is make it a beta course, a beta course. Mm-hmm. And, you know, develop it as you continue. Mm-hmm. And I was um, 
what I did, is perhaps it would be, I don't know, it's interesting to me. We were, I was teaching kids like they were about 10 years old, parts of speech. So when okay. I used the story, so it's almost like a treasure hunt. They had to find okay. the verb, they had to find the adverb. And every week we would introduce the next one of these. Amazing. That's very so impressive. A lot of backfitting of the story. It's like you have to like mangle it to fit your purpose. Uh, so I, I used a fairy tale, not so mm-hmm. well known, but well known enough. And But it's in the common, what do they call it? Common area. So I'm not going to get any copyright strikes. I'm not okay. using but it still is a good story. So that's okay. what I did. But I had so much to learn. And I was about clients and taking criticism and serving mm. people. At one point, there was this one woman who told me she didn't like the magic in the story. Oh. It's a fairy tale. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I rewrite the story without the magic just for her. Right. But here's the crazy part. I thought about it. Yeah. I considered that for a minute because I want yeah. to serve and I want mm-hmm, to be mm-hmm. everything for everybody. Mm-hmm. I think many of us are like that at the beginning, but that was like a good wake up call. No, 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 no. You cannot do that. If, if I say yes to her, I'm saying mm-hmm. no to all the other moms who were asking me to write the follow up. And, and so, saying no to your pure path and your pure vision of what you like, want to create and offer. Exactly. It's like, it's very people pleasing. Yeah. Okay. So I, I could, I could see where I was struggling. And then one day I listened to a, pod, a podcast interview. That's uh-huh. why I like podcasts so well. And it was with this life coach and she was explaining that she worked only three days a week and she was making millions. Mm-hmm. And then I realized, eh, hey, I'm not doing this right <clears throat> There's a better way to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Online I, space, yeah, sure. Start I, with what you know and grow. Yes. Yeah. I started following her. She was coaching people on business, but she's a general life coach about all areas. So it's okay. general principles that you can apply to every mm-hmm. aspect of your life. Following, listening to her podcast, and then I realized the mindset stuff is actually the crucial the crucial part of that. But I, as I started applying her things, I went from working 60 hours in, to six hours, but mm-hmm. doubling my income. It was mm-hmm. still not really a lot of money, but mm-hmm. just like working so much smarter and with mo- more effective, but mm-hmm. mostly because of the mindset and especially around the, the word no. Okay. I, I taught myself to say like that woman who wanted me to mm-hmm. rewrite the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Say no with more ease and less guilt. Yeah. But also the other part of being an entrepreneur is to to take the no's because you get an, you get a lot more no's than you get yeses. You, will you get reach- a lot more no's than you get yeses. And what does that tell us? That not everybody is our ideal client. No. And that no. we hold the keys to the power in deciding who we want to work with versus trying to work with everyone. Yes. Huge. Huge lesson to learn at the beginning. It is, but you have to sift through people. You have to like, okay, this is not going to work. So it's almost like having a resiliency around rejection. Mm -hmm. Not fall apart every time someone Mm -hmm. doesn't want to work with you. Or says something that they don't like about what you're offering. That just is a signal then you're not for me. Thank you. Yes, but I did that at the at the beginning. It was of so course. painful that it would yes. take me out of the game yeah. for way too long. Yeah. And that's what I mean with the mindset part. It's just like the ability to process your emotions better, almost building mm-hmm. a completely new relationship with emotions, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. getting over yourself. Well, I always say <laughs> if you really want to develop yourself fast. And start your own business. That's the yes. self development project <laughs> you can really embark on. <laughs> yes, yeah. One of my taglines is um, "soul fitness on the business playground." So you're working out who you are and using your business as the tool. But as you also mentioned, the um, the results that come from that are transferable and applicable to all areas of your life. So it's exactly. getting grounded and clear on who you are and what you stand for and how confident and not from a place of ego, but how confident you are with um, 
your knowledge, your expertise, the mission on your heart that you want to serve, and your response to the people who are uh, the crabs in the bucket. So if you don't know that story, Google it. The crabs in the bucket is like as old as business around crabs in a bucket. And one tries to climb out and all the other crabs are like, get back in here. What are you doing? Where are you going? Because when we show up doing something beautiful and somebody responds to that, it's really more about them and their trigger than it is about you, right? People are not thinking about us as much as we think they're thinking about us. Yes, true, so true. <laughs> I spend more time thinking about myself than I do other people. Yes. Therefore, so does everybody else. And even if they don't think that well of you, because some people won't feel, they, they just oh, yeah. won't, you know, it's like, and that's also just accepting <clears throat> that too. Accept that too, um, because one woman that I follow online says, you're not pizza. <laughs> and everybody loves pizza. Universally liked, no. Right? <laughs> but that's not the case. And it doesn't have to be, because guess what? You don't like everybody either. Yes, yes. True. true. And that's fine. And that is a huge shift to implement at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so here you are learning this and responding to this. And once hearing this life coach on the podcast, did she become somebody that you started to follow and you said you were practicing what she was teaching. And so you went down that and started applying it to yourself, which is where you started practicing your own coaching on yourself and going through yes. the resilience and the training. And especially I have, I have this one almost like a miracle story mm. with my own okay. mom. Okay. She was still back in South Africa, but mm. we had a very bad relationship. Okay. But I was able to completely transform that relationship by using coaching principles. It's mm. the same ones that I used in my business. I used with that. That's why I, I know it's transferable skill. It works for yeah. everything. Yeah, of course. And she passed away two years ago. But mm. at the end, it was a completely peaceful, loving, accepting relationship. And that's like... If if you if you were to ask me what I'm proudest of in my life, I yeah, would probably be the ability to turn that relationship around. Mm, that's amazing, and that came from you showing up differently. Yes, no, she, I know it's like I knew that she was not going to change ever, right. so I had to yeah. change. Yeah, but it's just like, and when I changed, I think she changed, but that's not the point. You know, it's mm -hmm. I just accepted her more and. I didn't, I dropped my expectations of not wanting her to make me happy because mm -hmm. I can make myself happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just loving her and being there for her. Dropping your expectations of her, doing it for your own trueness and completely accepting what is in front of you, which yes. is huge. That surrender. <laughs> oh, shoot, pardon. You are still and and they they are mowing the law in my in my. I can't hair. hear it at all. I'm good because I just can't like, hear it. But I apologize for my coughing. I'm camping for five six days on the beach out there screaming, so um, it's acting up a little bit. But we'll power through. So surrendering to what is detachment from the outcome, detachment from the outcome being so key because then you have more freedom mm -hmm. to practice the mindset to practice the skills and like watch for the reaction to it watch for that other exchange to show up so um you called this a miracle moment and when we were you know chatting prior to hitting record we talked about this idea of breakthrough and I'm feeling like now's a good time to take us into that into what a air quotes breakthrough is and I I say that with emphasis and my nose up in the air <laughs> um, because I'll you know you've coached over 600 different clients now and based on the testimonials and the results um which by the way you guys Risa's business model um her messaging is tame the dragon the dragon being the inner emotions the inner mind and I yeah. think it's a very 
well described. And in fact, it pays homage to your roots with the fairy tale of <laughs> with the online course, right? Yes, Bringing that element I didn't of, even thank you. I didn't. Re- I forgot about that connection. <laughs> <laughs> of like, yeah, uh, bringing that through. So taming the dragon of the mind, and um, in in doing so, what have you observed? Like, if you could describe or explain this concept of breakthrough for us, what would it look like? So to me, the breakthrough is the insight. It's a new insight. So for instance, my relationship with my mom, when I realized how emotions are formed, that's that's knowledge, that's insight. How they are formed, I form them with my own mind. And emotions are not that scary. They can feel uncomfortable, but they can't really harm you directly. And if that is true for me, it is true for her as well. Mm -hmm. And that that little bit of insight, it's like, so I could tell her no, because Mm -hmm. that's, you know, if you have good boundaries, it Mm plays it so much easier to have a healthy relationship. I could tell her no. And even though she was very disappointed, I knew it was just a vibration in her body Mm -hmm. that she had to deal with. Yes. The same as me. Yes. When people tell me no, it's a vibration in my body that I have to let pass from my body. It only lasts 90 seconds. Mm-hmm. That was mm-hmm. another big insight is mm-hmm. if you don't mess with emotions and keep telling, giving them new interpretation, tell mm-hmm. them new story, they just pass through your body. And that to me is what breakthrough means. Now, now I'm on the same page with you, Mia. It's like... <laughs> learning that it's training yeah. retraining your brain the neuro <clears throat> creating the new neurological pathways mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. takes time but when you come back to the insight the realization this is how it works again and again it becomes so much easier to redirect the electricity mm-hmm. in the new way you want it to go so is that do you like my idea of breakthrough <laughs> it's, a it's a different way of looking at things um, I love it, and it it is really paying attention while you're in it. And so I'm going to use the frog in the pot analogy this time. It's and buckets and pots, okay, and lots buckets of buckets and pots. We spend a lot of time in the kitchen cooking animals. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I guess I'm a 90s business kid of some kind through my dad's influence, most likely. But um, and university, like it's just so funny. Side note, rabbit hole. The way that business is presented in a scholarly way versus the way that we do it online seem very different, although there are some connections. Anyway, these analogies come with me from 15 or so years ago. And if you Google frog in the bucket, you're going to get a bunch of different results. And some will argue the science of the validity of this example. But the the example um, beautifully illustrates this awareness that we have to have. And so the frog in the bucket is you put the or frog in a pot is you put a frog in a pot and then you slowly start to boil and the frog is acclimatizing and acclimatizing and acclimatizing. So isn't aware of what's happening and what, how you're describing breakthrough is the um, other side of it where you have a boiling pot of water and then you put the frog in and the frog is like, heck no, wing, and bounces out. <laughs> and so that is insight. That is being able to identify at time of occurrence and pause to make a new choice based on the information that we now have. Yes, exactly. So learning to ride a bike, learning a new language, getting orientation at a new job, a new relationship, right? These are all navigating uh, things that are unfamiliar that then become familiar but as you're doing it, <laughs> you're remembering the brokenhearted lesson or, you know, you got hired because of the skills from the other job or um, you're in parenting, say a friend gave you a, a wisdom uh, that works for their child that you apply and works for yours. And now you're doing that. So it's this twofold thing of being very self-aware and paying attention to what's happening and observing yourself 
and then being able to um, bring in new practices, which is where you're talking about the neuro pathways and creating the new habits and the new patterns to move forward in it. Yes. Exactly. So the self-awareness is very important, but it's, it's the, there's a framework that I use. It's the thought, create the feeling and the feelings mm -hmm. drive the actions. Mm -hmm. Thinking, feeling, yeah. acting cycle. It's nothing new. It's just like the way that you see that. And when, when you realize that, okay, so that's why I'm feeling this way because of something I'm thinking, because the, the power is in is in the thinking, it's in the reframing, the new story, the new interpretation you can give. But mm -hmm. so often we, I mean, people struggle with that. They, they don't have access to the, the thought, the specific sentence that's yeah. causing that. And then I say, okay, there's two ways to do that. It's like, get access for your feelings. If I feel this intense emotion, what am I thinking? Mm -hmm. And, but also pay attention to your actions. <clears throat> so after you've been to your mother-in-law and you, yeah. You have a whole tub of ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I doing this? You know, yeah. what am I feeling and what am I thinking that's causing this behavior? It's just like a way to to really get better access to your thought processes so that you can then change them. Because the biggest, the biggest difference almost of the biggest distance <clears throat> is <throat> between the thinking and the feeling, but then also the feeling and the acting. It's there's more space there than you realize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If you think something, you will immediately feel it. But if you mm -hmm. change the thought, even if it's just a slight change, it's for, for business owners, for instance, I will never succeed. Mm -hmm. will create so much discouragement, mm -hmm. but I haven't succeeded yet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so small, it's so tiny, but oh, okay. You can feel the possibility and then there's hope again. So, so a baby like, step, a baby step rather than like these step. quantum leaps, these yes. magic overnight successes. <laughs> it's, no. it's brick by brick, slowly, steadfast, and very consciously. And the reason that we get so bunged up in it, the reason, an observation that I have become aware of, an insight, I suppose, is that as adults, we have acclimatized to what is, and we have grown away from the youthful imagination, endless possibility. When I grow up, I want to be a unicorn, says my daughter, you know, who's four and a half. And I'm like, okay, like, about, you know, you can be anything. And then the stickiness of life comes and we've acclimatized and now we are the frog in the boiling water and we're like oh geez I want to get out now but I don't know how yes and so, so it's like we, we talked about that before it's you have to deal with what is you have to deal start where you are deal but with you what also is. have to be open to what can be what can and that's be? having that that loosely it's a paradox you want to hold loosely I am I'm okay with what is but I always at the back of my mind I know I'm capable because most most of us are capable of so much more than give us credit us have credit for <laughs> and we I'm so sorry and we have already created so much more yes we have already created so much more than we thought. So we have so much evidence in our lives already. And maybe they are um, many years apart, these great events. Maybe they're many years apart. But it, they stand for what is possible when you really commit and decide to materializing, to calling in an outcome that you want. And then all we have to do is practice that fitness on repeat and strengthen that skill. So when I um, wanted, I, I enjoy exercise classes. It's easy for me to just show up and receive orders and not make any decisions and just do what I'm supposed to yeah, do for an hour. Uh, me too. Me too. That's like, I'm yeah. Not be, with exercising. I just want someone to tell me what to do with exercise. I, I just want to get it out of the way. 
<laughs> or just, yeah, just like I'm a robot, do it. And my body will respond and my mind can relax and, and then I'm, I'm good. And so an exercise class I, I signed up for was kickboxing, was boxer size. And um, I hadn't done any martial arts. I hadn't done anything. And we're not, it was no contact in this particular one. <clears throat> um, but initially the punching motions felt really foreign. And I mean, I'm a fairly fully formed adult in her 30 something, early 30s, probably when this was happening. And I was like, this feels weird. Ugh. And now, uh, and not that I've like gone all in on it, but um, I did just like 10 years later say, do a kickboxing class with contact and like, oh my goodness, <laughs> like light up and like destroying things and loving it. So that is evidence. You guys really listen, really listen, because Risa just shared such wisdom and then putting it into like something that you can taste and smell <laughs> as you listen to this podcast. <clears throat> she said, deal with what is <clears throat> and be uh, uh, anchored to what can be. And this, this exercise class is an example of something that happened once and then again 10 years later and the connection between it over time. So now think about practicing that daily, weekly, monthly and closing that repetition so that it becomes stronger and more repeatable. And that's what we're doing. And that is how you create a breakthrough then is what you're saying is the application of the insight and practicing that and not having to get it every time, but having to being able to go back and start from, from here instead of from here and apply and apply and apply until it becomes the new, until you become like me and you scare all the other people in the class when you're punching and kicking. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading a book right now. It's 2X is, 10X is easier than 2X. It's mm -hmm. by Dr. Benjamin Hardy, but he wrote it with Dan Sullivan, who's a famous coach. And it, one of the exercises they make you do is like, think of five times in your life yeah. when you you 10x yourself but it's yeah. it's 10x your your self concept mm -hmm. and and then it's almost like what you did with the exercising it's that one moment mm -hmm. but you borrowed from your past and yes. brought it into your present yes. Yes. so for me the minute when i decided i want to start an online business i changed the way i looked at myself i changed it what was possible for me so that is mm -hmm. a breakthrough moment it's a 10x moment mm -hmm. But it didn't happen open over happen overnight. But I, mm -hmm. I still mm -hmm. had to apply, like you said, it's like the muscle memory. It's almost like like mm -hmm. mental memory. You also yeah. have to, to develop. But but finding those moments, if you can find five of them, when you really really change the way that you look about life, look on life, and look about so thought about yourself. Mm -hmm. Now bring it in, own it, think That's about right. it you know yes. journal about it and realize okay what was it that that changed it's I know they are going on it it's a little bit scary you have to drop like 80 percent of your identity mm -hmm. and work on only 20 percent now you know it's like frog in boiling water that's mm -hmm. a, that's scary to me but <clears throat> when you really boil it down when you think about what is the 20 percent that I kept and what was the 80 percent that was that I just let go of. It wasn't serving me anymore. And if you can find five, five of those moments throughout your life and realize, but I've already 10 x myself. I've already right. made these huge jumps in my life. Mm -hmm. So I can keep doing that. I can keep doing that. And most likely, my beautiful listeners, most likely those five moments were because you really wanted whatever that thing was. Yes. You really wanted it. and. You had such clear vision towards it that nothing was going to stand in your way. And what happens in business is we get all caught up in ourselves because we're thinking about ourselves more than anybody else's, as I said earlier. And in that is where you stay in this boiling water instead of um, starting to maybe blow on it to cool it off. <laughs> <laughs> Just get out of that pot if you don't want to be there anymore. <laughs> so, so tangible, so practical. 
And one of the ways that I like to encourage this is with a trophy wall. So creating your evidence, and that's what you've described here too. And, um, you know, that allows us to remember what we are capable of and to be looking at what has been and what is, as you said, and using that as <clears throat> encouragement to what more can be so that it's not like conditional or waiting for something to happen. It is just a matter of choosing until it happens. Yes, exactly. That's so good. Choosing until it happens from where you are. So, Risa, tell us a little bit then of how you've grown from running uh, an online course for kids from one country to another <laughs> to now running this coaching business and serving hundreds of clients <clears throat> and how um, how you've set up your business to still be spacious and easy and how you support yourself in continuing to, because there's no limit to this. It's not like then you get there and you're done and you're like, yeah, yeah top of the mountain. Like there's no top. It's endless. And as we've been saying, it's not just in business, it's in life. <clears throat> but we use business as a playground to grow ourselves throughout everything. So take me into a little bit of that as to, you know, um, the growing pains, Teachable being a you know, brand new software platform, lots of moving bits, building a course, which I'm doing now in a different um, host, has a lot of moving bits and, and different things. And now a coaching program and how, um, how you've set that up and what you've learned about, you know, figuring things out on the go and um, maintaining a business that doesn't bog you down, especially like in the admin and the operations side of it. Okay, so I, like I said, I followed that woman, the, pod, the life coach in her podcast, and eventually I got certified through her school as a life awesome. coach. Awesome. I just, I loved her framework so much. And mm -hmm. the the little South African yeah. <laughs> links company, it, it was expensive, the coach, um, coach certification, yes. it paid for that. Great. So I, I invested in myself, in my, Great. you know, it's like I'm getting yeah. that certification. And then I kept, I was running both of them for a couple of years. I okay. sold that little company about a year ago Cute. to a South African mom because that it was it was it was the time was right for that she was there I lost contact my kids are no longer homeschooling you know I, I didn't really know the market but I have this wonderful wonderful sentence that I really try to practice there shall be no drama mm -hmm. so even it's like even the the, the giving it over to her mm -hmm. the way I it's like how can this be easy how can mm -hmm. I just like create yes. it in flow and what I did most of the time was just like screen recordings, mm -hmm. short ones about a specific topic. This is how you upload a course. This is how you edit something. This is mm -hmm. how you, you know, send the emails. Just like make it easy. Mm -hmm. So even the transition between the two, just like letting it go formally was, like you said, I was thinking about the operation and not to have a, a big mental load on myself. Make mm -hmm. it easy. Mm -hmm. But that, that has to do with, once again, mindset and the way that you manage your emotions. Okay, so that's how I got started running the other one. And that helped for I could do masterminds and things because that little company paid for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got trained more and more in, in sales and everything. Mm -hmm. I always knew that for at least a couple of years, I wanted to be a one-on-one -on -one coach. Mm -hmm. um, that's a good way to earn your stripes and to really get good at your craft. And then probably someday I would like to have a group I don't know at, at the moment I enjoy it so much to work individually uh -huh. with people yeah and it's tailor-made it's like it's so it's unique it's I, I tend to this person specifically mm -hmm. and the one and the thing about one-on-one -on -one coaching that people don't often realize is <clears throat> time in in um what's the word time I forgot the word English words also it's times it's not time sensitive inset it's time intensive intensive Iron intensive yeah so mm -hmm. you, you have to spend mm -hmm. you know it's like yeah. you can't really scale big but the other thing is if you have a good framework and you know your stuff you just show up and you coach mm 
Mm -hmm. But if you have to build a course, there's like Mm -hmm. you said, there's a lot of back-end work that you have to do. So that's a good way for me to start. And I'm still staying there. I'm loving this. I coached in Russell Brunson of ClickFunnel. I coached for him under contract last year. Okay. And that's where I got all those penny sessions because yeah. I was, but they were providing the client. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was amazing. He is a very generous person and the way he treated us. And that was like another level up for me. It was mm-hmm. a lot of admin that I had to do because you had, we had to give proof that we actually coach the people uh-huh. Uh-huh. So getting those systems in place. Mm-hmm. And, but once again, always reminding myself, there shall be no drama. How can this be easy? Make it easy. And you coached her over 500 through that contract. No, it's, like, no, it's sessions. It's like sessions. So, okay. they, so they assigned the same people to okay. me. Okay. And, you know, I saw them okay. every second week. So, but it's like okay. over a 12 month period. That's like Amazing. How, I, how I saw, I saw so many of them. And it's, it's always the same problems. It's like. <laughs> You start to pick the pattern. So in my day job, I see that too, right? Like I can, I joke that I'm a psychiatrist, an underpaid psychiatrist by trade. So what I really love about this, and I really want to pull out, is you found a contract and went in. And I would call that a collaboration, even though you were hired in this way. And you, you know, the folks who have been listening, like I'm all about the collaboration of building our businesses individually, but together. And this was a way that you did that to get confidence, to get exposure, to get experience, to earn your stripes, as you say. Um, And also, guys she made it super easy for herself because she didn't have to go out and find those people she could just focus this is so beautiful on just the skills and the practice of your specific unique talents and way of showing up with the dragon and everything to impart that to serve that and so that begs the question for listeners to think about How can you make it easier on yourself and remove some of that pressure on yourself to still achieve what you want in your business, even if it's not exactly what you think you you want? Because maybe you're trying the wrong way. Maybe you're forcing it from the wrong way. Yeah. And so from here, you did that year contract, and now are you moving into like on your own or yes in, now in I have or? but I, I I had my own practice even during that time even during that, I always yeah. knew that is what I wanted yeah. to do but this contract it was such like you said like in terms of training it was such a great opportunity <clears throat> I couldn't I couldn't yeah. pass by yeah. it, was, it was great but but now it's now it's <clears throat> one-on-one coaching mm-hmm. for people mostly I would say business coaches themselves you know yeah. teach people strategy yeah. When I looked at all my clients, it's like, oh, those are, like you said, you, you want to coach people that you really want to coach. And that's yeah. kind of a pattern that's emerging. Yeah. That usually coaches for, for other people, but they have to work on their mindset. They need some, they need the dragon trainer to yes. <laughs> train their own emotions and the yes. ego and everything. Yes, absolutely. Because... <clears throat> This is what Risa and I were saying about wanting somebody to give us our exercise class, right? Is that we want to show up and be told what to do. Now, that works for me because I know that that boot camp instructor knows how to hit certain targets of cardio and strength and resistance in my body that I don't have to come up with. But I know that I'm capable of performing it physically. And so when we work with a coach, They come in and get to know us and see what our programming is and then can pull it out so that we can see it and start to shift it. So you get this other observer who helps you increase your self-awareness and keeps you accountable and calls you out on things that maybe you know, but you're denying to yourself which is why it's really important to work with somebody. If you really want to have success, you need somebody to get to know you, to hold that mirror up of of beautiful magic that you have and also of the shadows that need to come into the light. We're talking about a lot of analogies today. So here's another (laughs) one for you. We are all of us like a jar and we can't read our own label. 
Mm -hmm. So that outside perspective mm -hmm. is so valuable. It's definitely been for me. You know, I, I worked with a coach last year and it was one-on-one -on -one, just mm -hmm. on my self-concept. And it was, I'm still thinking of some of the things and some of the sessions I had with her and mm -hmm. it was so precious. So I really, truly believe in the, in the power of coaching and getting that outside perspective, someone who's who's not in your story, not in your drama, mm -hmm. who can just like be a yeah. calm observer, yeah. but loving, yeah. Yeah. And help you and pull you out of there. So yeah. coaching is amazing, I think. It, well, it changed my life. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. And now it's changing lives of others. Yeah. yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Risa, this has been so lovely. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground. Is there anything else that you want to share as we wrap up I don't know we, we've talked about so many things it's if I can what we talked about before you're capable of so much more than you think because the other reason for that is you are always evolving you are mm -hmm. always becoming yes so yes. do go out into the world and be your best self go Apply, after your passions yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apply everything that you've collected, all the talents and skills and practice that you've collected and continue to apply it, continue to increase that fitness. Yes. yes. Yeah. So yeah. I think that would be my that would be my parting words. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. And um, if folks want to follow you, I mean, your socials will be in here and I see that you offer free discovery calls. So people are welcome to reach out and book with you. And I think that's that that's the best way, even if it's just if you, you're not sure if you want to work with a coach, but just mm -hmm. having an hour with me and we can mm -hmm. I can get to know you and mm -hmm. see, OK, if I were you, I would do this. Even if you don't decide to work with me, it, it mm -hmm. can be so valuable to have that, yes. that perspective for free and just talk yes. to someone who really wants to see you win. <laughs> yes, yes. Beautiful. Amazing. Thank you so much. I've had such a great time on the show with you today and I look forward to continuing to know you online. Thank you, Mio. Thank you for having me.